folks, it is Sunday morning. <sighs> wow. I'm sleepy this morning. It's 6.03 a.m. February 12th, 2023. And it is weigh-in Sunday. Uh, I got the scale out and ready here. Gotta get around to it. Uh, crank it up. Steven. So, as you can see, doing the dirty keto last week, and I wasn't even trying hard, to be honest with you. I wasn't even trying hard with it. Uh, uh, and I wound up losing about seven pounds. Oh man, I'm just too tired. Uh, I managed to lose what, seven pounds almost? What's a, well, five pounds, five pounds. I can't even remember. Yeah, five pounds, it's too early, sorry. Math is not my strong suit in the morning. I lost over five pounds. <clears throat> we'll take that. That's a good victory for me. I'm going to take that. Well done, me. <laughs> now, I didn't really do anything as far as measuring. Uh, do a belt measurement is what I normally do. Uh, to see how far I went down. Uh, because, you know, uh, along with the weight gain that I've had, you know, since uh, December holidays, uh, this is starting to feel like it's shrinking again. This feels flatter than it was feeling. This time last week, so a lot of the bloat has gone away. That I was feeling over the past month uh, and I think that might be just due to all the inflammation and stuff uh, finally going away uh, maybe you know the keto genetic side of uh, dirty keto has is responsible for some of that uh, I'm going to cut this clip right here. We will move on with the day when I come back. But uh, that is the uncut clip uh, from start to finish of my scale weight this Sunday. All right, we'll talk to you in a few. Go get some coffee. All right, folks, so it's Super Bowl Sunday. And, uh, yeah, done my way in earlier this morning that you saw. And, uh. Super Bowl Sunday, yeah, yeah, Super Bowl Sunday. So, uh, I ain't participating in it. I uh, really don't care about it this year. Uh, I guess if I had to pull for a team, and I may look at it off and on, uh, I'd go with Philadelphia, maybe. I don't know, because I kind of, you know, Kansas City's okay, too. So, I'm all right either way, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh... For lunch, I had some lemon pepper wings and, and a salad at lunchtime. My wife and me stopped on the way to get uh, my daughter some, and uh, we got a salad and some hot wings from this little restaurant we uh, go to sometimes. <clears throat> and uh, this afternoon, I uh, got out my electro made. Now, my Electro-Made, uh, 
is as old as I am. <laughs> it was a tool made back in 71, and some of you may have seen some of your grandparents had one. I know my grandparents had one. I don't remember my mom and dad having one, but I remember my grandparents had one just like the one I got. And it makes some superior type of food in it because we we make we got burgers right and we put the burgers in there and uh you know it's got a lid that you close up on it uh and it gives it like a surround heat and it's temperature controlled uh yeah back in 71 they made temperature control stuff i wouldn't know because i am as old as this cooking utensil <laughs> But uh, it does a good job on burgers now and other things too because uh, with that temperature control like it is you can fill the bottom of it with oil and fry things on it. And I got lucky with mine because uh, this one was such a good shape that it still had its operational instruction book it, booklet and uh, a lot of times that is missing from the electromat. I've seen people, you know, a few people post on YouTube about them, you know, they, they don't have the uh, the booklet and they're looking for them. They're looking for that booklet. They can't find it. Sometimes I see them on eBay still with a booklet every now and then, but I got lucky. Mine came out of a consignment shop and it was well taken care of. I give, I give $9 for it. <laughs> It's worth every penny. That cooking surface on that thing is different from anything you can buy in today's standard market. It is an amazing cooking surface. I don't know what material that is, but it is great. It's perfect. But, uh, anyway, anyway here, here's my burger. Uh, I got it on uh, keto sandwich bread to that tonight. That sandwich bread right there is okay. It is pretty okay. As far as keto breads go, I, I like the thins better, but I'm saving them for something else. Wow, y'all. Yeah. Once you close that lid up on there, it cooks that burger throughout. cooking other things in the kitchen you can just turn it down to its lowest temperature and it'll <laughs> toggle the heat on and off to keep it around a really low temperature that's what I did so there was no way they could overcook so no matter how long it took me to get everything else prepared which I didn't prepare anything else my wife made some broccoli that we had with this But tomorrow, mm, Big Country and myself are going to explore keto french fry options that are not potatoes. <laughs> Today, while I was at the grocery store, I got myself one of those hickamas. Now, I've tried jicama before, and I wasn't real impressed with it, but, you know, big countries wanting to, you know, go through the experience, you know, and, uh, we said we'd go through it together and do a little fun, uh, comparison between his channel and mine. I'm gonna do the jicama, the turnip, and the rutabaga, and then I'm gonna do Heavenly Fans Fries on Thursday. Because, uh, in my opinion, that's going to be the best one. But I did like the turnip fries pretty good now that I think about it. 
Uh, so the more I'm doing the jicama first, I don't know if he's going to try the turnip or the jicama or the rutabag or whatever's available to him within those three vegetables. Uh, is a jicama a vegetable? Or is it a root? What the hecka is a jicama? <laughs> But, but anyway, anyway, we got this going on, y'all, and y'all got to watch both of our channels to see our take on each one of these different keto french fry options, because on Friday, he's going to prepare a dish with his favorite style of keto french fries from all of those, and I'm going to compare, I'm going to prepare something from my favorite one as well. He going to put his unique spin on that, and I'm not going to know what that's going to be. And I'm going to do the same thing, put my unique spin on it, and uh, there you go. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to want to miss this week's Latch Key and also keeping it real big country. Because we're going to have fun with this. And uh, y'all know me. I like poking the bear, so I know I'm going to be the better cook. <laughs> but y'all be the judge. Y'all be the judge. Mm. That is awesome. Mm. That is amazing. That thing does such a wonderful job with hamburgers. It keeps all the grease right there inside of them. <laughs> with that lid on there, you only have to flip them once and they cook so fast, they don't even have time to shrink up, y'all. They're just big old greasy meat sponge is what they are. You carnivores would love that machine. Go look up Electro Made for yourself. Maybe you get lucky and find one. If you can find one in decent enough shape, it is worth the purchase. Maybe your grandma's got one you can borrow, but it's hard to get one. Hard to get one. Don't make things like they used to. Trust me, a roaster oven, a modern roaster oven is not the same cooking surface as that Electro made. Mm -mm. Not even in the same ballpark. Anyway. I have taken up too much of y'all's time today. Looking forward to the French fry review between uh, Big Country and myself. Uh, we'll be like Cisco and Ebert, you know, with the movies, except for with the with the keto, dirty keto uh, foods. So be sure to check us out. Tomorrow, you folks have a good one.